You've tuned into the Bellingham Podcast for the week of February 2, 2020. That's Groundhog Day. Episode 143. From the Northwest and Northwest, I am Chris Powell. And sitting to my left, if you can picture in your mind, the Grand Poobah of the gregarious populace, the High Chief of the tech elite, the Baron of the Barclay District, the MC of the scene, you see, award-winning photographer, and his mama's favorite podcaster, your friend and mine, Mr. A.J. Barsay. A.J., tell him how you feel. Awkward. How are you, Chris? We're still doing that, huh? Caffeine. In. Yes, I want. I love these intros. It, I get to express myself, to be creative, and to highlight all that is good about my podcast partner in crime, AJ Barce. You are very, very too generous, and also you're caffeinated. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a while. Chris. It has been a while. Just got out of prison a couple weeks ago. Uh, Just <laughs> kidding, folks. Just <laughs> kidding. No, we had a snowpocalypse uh, here in Bellingham, If I Washington. hear that hook one more time, it was not a snowpocalypse. We had a lot of accumulation of yes. compact snow and ice, yes. and, and that no- lasted a while. Okay, what was up with okay, why 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 is this still a thing? Okay. <laughs> why is we snow live, still a thing? <laughs> I to quote you, from the north of northwest of the northwest, I'm Chris Powell. Yes. If we are in the northwest of the northwest, why is it we cannot keep our streets plowed? Hmm. If if we know we are in this locale, how is it that things shut down for four days, folks? Four days. Mm. How is that still a thing? Well, you know, I, I th- uh, from what I heard, you know, the school districts and other uh, colleges and universities in Bellingham and Whatcom County had a decision to make. Do you keep school running sure. in which those who may not be as mobile mm-hmm. as us may have difficulty navigating the walkways sure, sure. in accessing where they need to go? Or if you decide to err on closing things down, now you've got a whole lot of parents who got to figure out child care no, for their job. So it's a really tough decision for the decision makers. Sure. And I get it. But here's the thing. Kudos to the uh, the, 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 the scrapers. Yeah, the, the, what, the ice folk. The ice folk who are uh, making the roads, the major arterials, if you will, within Bellingham from my limited geographical transportation needs the iceman of the night watch oh that's i tasty. tried i tried it's tasty uh but you know what residential streets not so much no let's work on some levies folks let's pass some bills and pay more taxes to get more of these uh scrapers out there what do you say oh did i just get into the political no realm? no you didn't that okay, was just cool. a good statement i just right, want to be cool. able to provide access for everybody uh now that that's over with <laughs> and we're, we're in the rainy season and i'm currently waterlogged uh aj how have things been for yourself uh, it's been all right. Um, to, to quote the great philosopher Olaf, this will all make sense when I'm older. But uh, no, it's been great. I just uh, I, I've, I've missed the show. And uh, thanks to all our listeners that have reached out to I, on Instagram. You haven't been, been following, but I've had a few Instagram, people. Instagram, what's that? It's a thing with the pictures. Yes, the picture. Um, and, yeah, and the hearts. and the Anyway, yes. no, uh, we, we're still alive. Everything's still kicking. The show is still running. And I appreciate everybody who's reached out and just asked like, how we are doing. Why hasn't there been an episode? I just got out um, of prison. No, stop it. Be nice. Stop <laughs> I it. I am nice. No, anyway, I just want to say, I just want to give a shout out to all of our, our listeners. I, I greatly appreciate y'all checking in on us. But all we're right. good. Yeah. Chris and I still like each other. It's great. Yeah, you know, no, we're, no. we're peas and carrots. It's yeah. all good. We're marching to 200. Oh, yeah. And you're along with us, and we're so appreciative of that. Now, in that same interim, though, I had a hard time getting a hold of you because you got a new phone. Uh, well, no, let me, let me, let's, <laughs> let's back up a little bit. I had a one night stand. Oh, really? At yeah. your age? I had a one night stand. Tech one night stand. With an Android phone. <gasps> yes. Be still, my heart. What happened oh, between gosh. the two of you? So I'm a tech. I'm, it's my career. It's my calling. It's my passion. It's, it's what I do. You do things with that. And I've been in the iOS camp. My family has mainly iOS devices. Uh, and having gone through the Linux immersion with my, desktop, uh, with my laptop that I have, I'm really enjoying what Linux has available. I've been seeing... Um, you know, some Android phones that are looking pretty skookum mm-hmm. in, in the pictures and, and other things. And I'm like, what would life be like? And I wanted to find out, could I jump ship? We had a couple things going on in my family involving uh, devices and things like that. What if I gave my uh, beautiful wife my phone mm-hmm. uh when the hers eventually, you know, passes on to greener tech pastures. And I decided to try Android because as a tech, I want to be familiar with the operating system. So there are a number of Android phones out there, but the only one, and I think I've said this on previous episodes, the only one I would ever consider 
purchasing is a OnePlus Android phone. Mm -hmm. I dig their business model. I dig their phones. They got huge Horkin screens, great uh, hardware specs, like an entry level model or like the nicely equipped model. Six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabyte yeah. hard drive. Yeah. That is double the RAM of most iPhones. Right. And that 128 gig internal hard drive is on the high end side for most of what they would have. Agreed. For a reason. Okay, what is reasonable? That's subjective for to a lot of folks. Uh, to n- f- Technologically b- reasonable on the market that we know. Right. For a, for a quasi flagship phone. So I threw down on a OnePlus 7 Pro phone, 6.x inch screen, OLED uh, screen, all, all on a Sesame Seed bun. All, all of the specs on a sheet, how much? Uh, it was about $500. Uh, out the door because it's been discounted. It's not the new shiny. The 7T is the new shiny in OnePlus uh, land. But I wanted to be able to have something that had, you know, updated specs last me two or three years. <laughs> so I thought. So <laughs> I had everything planned out. I, I, like, I have all my apps on my phone. I have 26 applications on my iPhone, by the way, for those of you playing at home. Because his handle is at M-N-M-L-T-E-K. Yeah, Minimal Tech. I still have that handle. Uh, how would I be able to have these apps on an operating system that is developed by a company that has obscene amounts of telemetry and data collection based on your account? How can I install secure apps and maintain that privacy and security integrity that I want to have uh, and still be able to function on a, data ba- on a day-to-day basis? To disengage from life with iOS, as I found out, um, so my family's on an Apple Music plan, Ooh, okay. and uh, there's at this point there's no Apple Music service on Android. Huh. Uh, so I had to go to Spotify, and okay, there's an you, app. Yeah, I was going to say you, you've said on a previous show you've got a, a, a playlist twister. Well, app. it's an app. Yeah. There's an app for that. It's called Song Shift. That's it. And I got the premium version, which on it's like 50 songs you could transfer for free, but then if you throw five bucks their way. You can do entire playlists. I have a playlist of about 1,700 rock songs from Days of My Ute to current, ooh, this is a tasty song, uh, <laughs> that was transferred from Apple Music onto a Spotify playlist. I couldn't use Apple Music on an Android phone. Sure. Uh, my wife and daughter have iPhones. We have group chats for the family. Okay. And – I found out, and I was probably – I did not go into a deep dive and to try to troubleshoot this, but if there was a group chat message and I sent one out, it would go directly to the users. It would not go into a group chat functionality mm-hmm. in which one message would serve them all. That, at least in the early stages, was ver- going to be a big sticking point, mm-hmm. a source of friction for me. Another one is Apple Maps. A lot of this is integrated with, you know, I use Apple Maps on my iPhone just to have one less map app on my device. Plus, I don't trust what is being uh, given by or taken by the G Maps. I know there's open source maps and all this other stuff. But on an Android phone, the default is. Yeah, but you can change the default. And uh, my work calendar is on Outlook. Right. And my non-work events are on Outlook. And on the iPhone, there is not any kind of device management or other types of things to allow system administrators to be able to remotely wipe my iPhone device in case of nefarious activity. Enterprise um, management. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can't say the same about Android. The Outlook app requires that capabilities from other parties to have that remote capability on my phone, that's a quasi deal breaker. That's sure. nearly a deal breaker for me. Sure. Because I don't want anyone being able to go doink. <laughs> you and... are the weakest link. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> wow, that was a 90s reference. I try. See, yeah. we're swatch- <laughs> swooping rolls here. You know? Not bad. And then also, uh, I use an app called Fantastical on the uh, on the iPhone. I thoroughly love it. By the way, they just came out with version 3.0. Woot. And now, instead of buying separate app prices for iPad, iPhone, and desktop Mac OS. It's one annual fee. So oh, long nice. if you know the words, but it works for all of them. And it's got some nice premium features um, in which I have my Outlook calendar in a nice uh, application. They don't have something like that on Android. There are a lot of Android calendar apps. Everyone and their second cousin has an a- a calendar app. Well, actually, available. everyone and their second cousin has a Flashlight Plus app. Everyone yes. and their third cousin has a right. uh, calendar app. And so... Th- 
the lack of vetting in the Google Play Store uh, to download such apps, I had to do a significant amount of research. And I'm like, Ouch. I just want to have what's coming up in my day. Couldn't find one that didn't involve Microsoft Outlook. Hmm. There's not, you know, there's Business Calendar, there's ACAL, there's Simple Calendar. Yeah, I've tried them, folks. Uh, <laughs> thanks for your thanks for your uh, ideas and tips. Couldn't find one. And then the the main one was my sudo. In right. my sudo, they do not have an Android app developed yet. Oh. Probably in process, okay. but those masked phone numbers, those masked email addresses that I use to receive notifications and other uh, things to protect my personal SIM phone number and my personal email address doesn't have an Android app. So therefore, in order to disengage from life with my iPhone and iOS, I had to have another device, my iPod Touch, right. with these apps installed. Hey, guess what, AJ? What's that, Chris? I'm a minimalist. Wait, what? Really? You, <laughs> and, you, you, you think less is more? It took me 24 hours of, of a one-night stand with Android <laughs> to realize, wait, if I'm going to be moving to Android, I need to have another device in my life. <laughs> so I got the RMA form, <laughs> and I returned <laughs> OnePlus, all in its original packaging, barely used, et cetera, et cetera. But it did you help scratch that mental itch that you have? You and I have talked off the mic about, you know, what would it take to switch? Yeah. You know? It, yeah. With the way that we are and the way that we function, and more importantly, the way that our family functions happily. Yes. So oh, this was your result. It was my it it was what it is. exercise in a, a what if. And like we said in many episodes, I'll go first. And it was uh, an experience. And there's plenty of great features about Android. There's re- yeah. it's a, They've improved leaps and bounds over the operating system years, in, in, you know, upgrade years. Um, it's a solid operating system. However, there's just that nagging splinter in my mind, hi, Neo, uh, that is the company that's making this is grabbing an amazing amount of data on all of my travels. Mm-hmm. And who's to say that the iPhone isn't well, doing the same thing? Well, it is. I mean, that that is yeah. a proven fact. However, you can reach in and and actually cl- scrub that data. Yes, you know, like that. That I guess that's the difference. Unless yeah. you're in a different country, like GDPR, mm-hmm. or now the new uh, California um, California passed that new law. Um, it's just it was just too much addition to my life, and I get addition through subtraction with having less in my life. That's division. I'm just kidding. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so anyway, it was an exercise. And for those Android folks out there, um, still love you. But uh, on your podcast app of choice, you could be listening to us uh, through that. Or you could find a way, if you're in your car stereo, to listen to us on KMRE in Bellingham, 102.3 FM. And they're community-powered and community streaming on KMRE.org. That's right. So – uh, that was a wonderful experience with technology, but I do I did not sell my iPhone or give my iPhone away. I'm still with uh, the XR. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you're, 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 I, well, I, you said like you were like wanted to go all in, and I'm like, eh. yeah, I know you you were uh, supportive, but still cautious for yes. me. Yes. And this is what happens when you have a one night stand with something else that isn't the uh, the tried and true. Uh, well, what you're comfortable with, and more importantly, what your family's comfortable with. I yes. mean, that's that's the biggest thing. Like you and I are family men. Like it's the, at the end of the day, like we can go down a lot of different roads, but sure. if it doesn't mesh with the family unit, there yeah. is more work for us waiting when we get off the clock. And sure. that that's not that's a deal breaker. For if me. it was just me and I was a hermit, and it was only me. Yeah, I could probably roll with that. Uh, by the way, in in preparations for this Android uh, experience, I created a brand new Google account, hmm. and I was able to export my iPhone uh, iOS contacts into a CSV file oh, nice. in which I went to contacts.google.com and uploaded that CSV so when I signed in all the contacts were there waiting for me which right. was nice uh, and I had the song shift so when I signed into Spotify boom there's all my playlists but it took a lot of work and if you're interested in making that switch or you have to make that switch uh, look you know Google Chris Powell Bellingham you might find a contact form. If you can find me, maybe you can hire me. Uh, anyway, we can have you a sound very like you sound very spooky there. If you can find me, maybe you, you can, can hire me. the A team. <laughs> that was the intro to the '80s TV show. I uh, see. There's the reference All that right, I was waiting let's for. Let's move on. So, let's talk about getting happy. Uh, you know, after this uh, month of January, as we are recording this, we are on the the hind quarters of this month. Yes, the tail end, if you will. And by cracky AJ, I need a drink. Okay. So, with the disclaimer that I always do, uh, what we are about to talk about is one thing, but make no mistake, listeners, 
sports fans, friends of the Bellingham podcast, we have tremendous honor and respect for those that are currently in recovery and those who decide who decide willingly not to partake in a drink. With that in mind, AJ, when the when the someone pulls a tail on that bird on the Flintstones theme, Boop. and you go yabba dabba do and slide down that dinosaur into you, meet the Flintstones. Where does AJ Flintstone go to grab a drink after work? So funny enough, the first one is actually a coffee shop, and but they do beer and wine. Mm-hmm. Should you want to partake? So uh, baby greens, I really oh, yes. like baby greens. Like it's just nice, especially because like I like an after work coffee mm-hmm. personally. We've we obviously we've we've recorded there. We think they're the goods. Um, but also one of the things I wanted to point out is that cafe does you know a happy hour. Absolutely. You know you can do beer and wine there, and you'd be surrounded by the vegetation that is the coolness of that shop. Yes, and uh, it's on the corner of State Street and I believe Chestnut going up the hill. Yeah, it's, yeah, near Boundary Bay. We have downhill. a link in the show notes, and for the love of Ivan Cola. Off. Drink. That's right. Uh, in this case, caffeinated beverages. Yes. Uh, so to start it off, to start off, what about you, sir? Uh, my first choice, and you know, I I've kind of had a little bit of a change in my libation addiction. It's not really an addiction, but it rhymed. Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying cider nowadays. Really? Yeah. It's a little more refreshing than beer. Uh, <laughs> plus, it sounds nicer. Cider. Beer. Um, <laughs> there's a place in town called the Bellingham Cider Company, uh, yeah. and it's uh, kind of in the. It's by the Mount Baker Theater, by the Black Drop Coffee House, just kind of in that uh, street hood area, across the street from Henderson's Books, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, wonderful, not really hole in the wall. It's a pretty expansive it's a, location. Yeah, it's a big location, but they have some tasty cider, and I kind of like the level of music that they have, here we go again, where you can have a conversation in this decibel level like we're having, yeah, and you're not bombarded by the oons oons and loudness that would occur to most uh, joints. And it's got town. a pretty good view. Yeah. Uh, sure, yes. Um, that Bellingham. zone, you know. Yes, like... exactly. It's a nice place downtown to grab a pint or a pilsner. Or a schooner. Or a schooner. There you go. I like it. Uh, for you, next. Um, so me, uh, Aslan Depot. So, Aslan Depot. So we yes. have we have two Aslans, or as I found out recently, if you're in the Fremont area over in Seattle, there's also an Aslan in Fremont. Hey Fremont. Uh, sup Seattle. So uh, no, so like Aslan Depot. So a lot of if you're if you're a college kid, you'll usually find, especially on a bright sunny day, all of the the college kids at Aslan, which yes. is that used to be the old uh, Science Plus shop. If you remember that back in the day, I don't. But I drove past it at high speeds. But uh, thanks for the uh, the a little Bellingham reference. history. Yeah, right. absolutely. So so anyway, great great venue. The, the if there's not anybody there, like I'll be brutally honest, like the acoustics, it's loud, it's obnoxious. But if you own the place, it's nice. You know, uh, they have that little upstairs deck up above. Aslan Depot is nothing like that. Nope, it's completely different on the spectrum. Aslan Depot is a speakeasy, for lack of better terms. All of the chairs look like, I don't know, the 1930s called. Retro. They're very retro. It's the studded chairs type of thing, like a smoking lounge. But they're comfortable. But they're super comfy. Yeah. And it's it's a low key. It's very subdued. And what they have on tap there will be different than the the normal rotation that is up at Aslan. So it's a lot slower type of a thing. It's more like your, your it's it's more like a a traditional pub as opposed to a bar or, yeah. or something. Um, you can have conversation there. They have uh, different. They also have ciders on tap. They have beers on tap. And it's just it's a lot different vibe. It's it's more of my scene where it's yes. a little bit darker, a little bit slower, and you know you don't have to worry about. I don't know, like, it's not that fa- – it's not that – It's not frenetic like a whole excitable uh, bar joint uh, it, like some places in town that have clogged parking for residents in certain residential right, areas. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's not a – it is it is not a hop-in place with regards to, like, you're going to run in and say, oh, my gosh, I haven't seen you forever. Let's go get a drink. No, it's more like you go there, you're going to maybe, you know, sit down, read your email, mm-hmm. have a pint or whatever. Like, it's it's just a nice lower key. It's not hopping, but it's got hops. Sometimes. For the beer. Right. Uh, what I enjoy and what my wife and I have grown to enjoy is over in the Barkley Hood, where we know it well, uh, there's a little bit of a hole in the wall. And I'm going to call this a hole in the wall. The Blue Abode Bar. Not to be confused with Adobe, because <laughs> i got to make sure I describe this Thank correct. Thank you very much. The Blue Abode Bar uh, in Barkley Village, near Mod, near Starbucks, uh, across the street from Overflow Taps. All are great locations uh, for happy hour stuff. But we dig the Blue Abode because... The bartender or the barkeep 
is very pleasant and friendly. Mm. Um, they have an extensive amount of drinks available. They got a wall of alcohol. Uh, <laughs> alcohol. That's right. And they've got a couple screens of various sporting events playing at all the time. So it's nice. But there's maybe seven tables, give or take, with some bar stools. Uh, and they have a comfortable couch. We've been lucky during that inclement weather season we just had Mm -hmm. we were able to migrate down and get out of the house for a little bit and they have a little bit of a love seat Mm -hmm. and we were able to sit there comfortably cozily and have a a couple of drinks to be able to just enjoy being out of the house uh after work that would be a great place to go in my opinion uh and then also various undisclosed uh, coffee shops around town, naturally. Of course. But, uh, what else you got? So my last one, actually, is courtesy of uh, uh, a friend of the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, David, I'm going to give him a shout out. Yeah. Hi, David. The, the, the loft at latitude 48.5. Yes. Or most people just call it the loft or latitude. This is one down on the waterfront? This is the original, the OG la- uh, latitude. Well, because we, we got latitude yes. up, up up north by us now, which so, they're owned by the same. It is the same you're thing. Right. I'm different. sorry. I got to digress for a little bit. Whenever anyone says OG. OG bought, Wiz? No, dude. I bought Ice T's original gangster <laughs> CD back in 1991. <laughs> original gangster. The lyrics are not appropriate. <laughs> Anytime someone says OG, I flash to that song. And, and hey, Ice-T, if you got time, love to have you on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. But <laughs> <laughs> you're in a rit- – Latitude at the loft for- – Loft a- at Latitude 40 is an original gangster? No, it's an OG. Anyway, so the, <laughs> the original uh-huh. – uh, What's a G then? It's, it's an abbreviation. Original, OG. Original. Got it. That's that's what the term is for nowadays. No, it's Not actually a... original gangster. I was just trying to pull a you and like do my <sighs> Jedi mind trick. You fished me in. I right. did. Talk about the <laughs> so loft. anyway. So the loft at latitude forty eight point five. Honestly, like yeah, you can go there. They've got standard local things on taps. But the 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 nice thing about that is the food. Yes. Like the thing about happy hour. Yes, we opened up with like to get a drink, but a lot of people go for happy hour because of discount on good food, right? Tiny bit appetizers. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, the loft has excellent food. I mean, anything on the menu is good, like everything. But the reason why I like it the most is the venue. You're right there at the port. Yes. Okay, you're literally right next door to the port of Bellingham. And when we have our three weeks of nice weather here oh. in Bellingham, the outdoor seating is choice. Oh, it is. It's yeah. primo. So that, that, that's my fave. We want to also make mention of their second, the, the, the second cousin location, like AJ had mentioned, on Sunset Drive, or it's actually on James Street, I believe. The intersection uh, of it. In Sunset Square area yeah. that as you take that curve, there's a little bit of a what used to be the Grace Cafe, I yep. believe. Yep. Uh, and that's a classy joint. I haven't been into the since they they moved in, but I was at that Grace. It's near some chain restaurants, yes, if you is. will. And that won't be mentioned. We recommend you check out the the Latitude uh, over there in Sunset Square. Totes. Also, uh, we can't forget speaking of food during happy hour. There's another place that both of us enjoy yeah. downtown. Why don't yep. you take this one? And so this one this one is uh, courtesy of another friend of the uh, show and listener, uh, Shay. Hey, Shay. What's up, Shay? So Black Sheep Bellingham, uh, of course. Black Sheep. Yeah, I mean they have a nice bar and stuff, but. Honestly, skip the libations and go for the tacos. You'll tacos, thank me later. Yes, uh, the, the, they are well done. And oh, I'm not talking about man. steak. They're, they're well prepared. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, and you know, get yourself a – I even had the, the, the vegetarian or vegan one. I can't remember which one it is. They are all excellent tacos. Absolutely. Sounds good. Um, one thing also, if one was to ask me, well, Chris, you know, stop talking about cool places around town. Where do you go? When you go uh, okay. after work. Okay, I, Chris, where do you go? Hana Teriyaki. Well, <laughs> <laughs> one of these days, Hana's got to sponsor us. We're going to have them on the show one of these days. It's going to be a fun interview. Uh, if, but anyway, no, to get food, that's my, that's yeah, my yeah. choice. But there's a lot of cool places, non-national franchise uh, restaurants and bars and drinkeries and eateries that uh, – are here only in this community. Mm. And if you're listening to this show for the first time, first of all, hi. And if you're Thank new, you. And if you're new to Bellingham and you're checking this out and you happen to type in Bellingham on your podcast search app and you found us, wouldn't this be a nice way to have you check out a couple places? Get out there. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people. That's Bellingham. Uh, but otherwise, you know, introverts, be prepared. I speak for them all. And <laughs> But it's worth the wait it's worth the uh, exp- it's worth the, uh, the experience. 
It'll it'll do you good. I agree. I agree. So, um, what's coming up uh, for you in February, pray tell? Oh, well, actually, that was going to be my question because I I've there there I have rumors that you have new projects spurring up, there, yeah. Mr. Powell. I w- but I want you to go first. Yeah, um, no, no. See, <laughs> I, I I can also watch the clock too. So yes. uh, no, sir, you have some projects we that ha- I know you want to tease, but not we are speak pr- of. We're approaching our fourth year of doing the Bellingham podcast in February, if I recall correctly. Yes, it, this would be the fourth year. Yeah, because it was in January that we launched. All right, um, and so uh, after having four years, like the time frame between Olympic events, mm-hmm. um, I've gotten pretty good at being a podcaster. And you do edit out a lot of my ums and uhs and my stutters and things like that, uh, which I appreciate. Not, not too many, but there might be a podcast in the future uh, that might have my voice associated with it. And the Minimal Tech Microcast? Uh, that actually, if you type in Chris Powell, you're going to see a wonderful picture of me taken by award winning photographer AJ Barsay. Now, there's time back in, I think, 2018 or so that I wanted to do these little short form technology yeah. sharing uh, podcasts. It's just my smoking word, a very clean setup. Um, so I'm a technologist, uh, my day jo- you know, by day job, by freelance, and by passion. And what I do during the day, uh, has a lot of has a lot of people involved around the world uh, using what I do, even though I don't have that much clientele. Um, I'm working on something. I'm building up the foundation of content to be able to uh, reach an audience of about a half a million people, yeah, potentially. And so, just seeing where that goes. But make no mistake. We're marching to 200. I was going to say, so so for the record, even though Chris is splintering off, kind of like when I splintered off and did the Analog Explorer, yes. w- it's still me and Chris. We're, That's we're right. still and, together. You know, He's in a pod. Th- for 50 years, Billy Gibbons, Dusty Hill, Frank Beard have comprised ZZ Top. Yes. Since 1969. Of course you would know this. Uh, or so. Billy Gibbons, lead guitarist, lead vocalist for ZZ Top, had a solo album or two along the way. Sure. Most recently. It's possible that in the Bellingham podcast, the world famous, internationally known podcast duo, sometimes you're going to do a solo album. We'll see what comes up uh, I dig it. later on I in dig February. It. Now for you, what's coming up in February? Uh, nothing, but I can wrap up the show. <laughs> 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 That's what I said. I was going to do you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's yeah. stick a fork in this. Uh, wraps up for this edition of the Belling Up Podcast. Thank you again so much for listening to us, rating us, reviewing us, wherever you get your podcast. Remember, if you're in the Belling Up area, you might listen to us on KMRE. 102.3 FM. The community powered and streaming worldwide at KMRE.org. Yep. And on that note... Man, it's been good to be on the mic. I'm AJ Barce. And I'm Chris Bell. Thank you once again for joining us on the Bellingham Podcast. Dude, the solo album thing, that was a good analogy. I didn't know where you were going to go with that. Lead guitar, Chris Powell. Bass guitar, Chris Powell. Drums, Chris Powell. Keyboards, Chris Powell. Vocals, Chris Powell. Lead sound engineer, AJ Barce. That's right. That's right.